Oh brother, this video has been in the works for like a year. And the main reason for this is because I needed to catch up on One Piece and I needed to scale One Piece and I needed to understand who was actually stronger between One Piece and Naruto. I'm not going to answer that question by the way because if I do answer that question then everybody's going to be jumping me regardless in the comment section. But I will discuss who would win in a fight between every single Akatsuki member versus every single Shichibukai member. These matchups are based on what I believe to be the best type of matchups for the Akatsuki versus Warlords and there will be two rounds to determine a winner. One with who would win in a fight normally and in round two who would win in a fight in equal stats. Alright guys let's waste no time, buckle up, and let's get controversial. Round one! Weevil versus Orochimaru. Both are in their respective groups, but it's weird because Weevil doesn't do anything and Orochimaru barely counts as an Akatsuki member in my opinion. This match is a freebie for you Naruto fans though since Weevil legit has nothing going for him unless you think he's actually equal to Whitebeard. Which for this video I'm not going to be saying because there is legit no feat for Weevil to back this up. And in equal stats I think Orochimaru would win regardless just because he outhacks him. So the winner for this round would be Orochimaru. Now for the next match, we have the arguably weakest Warlord versus the weakest Akatsuki member, that being Buggy versus Hidon. Now Hidon unironically is the slowest of the Akatsuki and does the worst out of the Akatsuki feet-wise. Bro actually lost to Asuma and is at best relative to Kakashi, however this Kakashi isn't even using MS and we know he gets way stronger throughout the series so this Kakashi like doesn't really matter. However we do know the likes of even Kid Kakashi can chop lightning bolts, however Luffy has been reacting to lightning since pre-time skip and we see him getting multiple times stronger and buggy would go on to be relative with this luffy we even see him perceiving kizaru's laser and reacting to characters who should be well into light speed buggy should be faster than hedon and unironically could damage hedon since he has buggy bombs that harm an opponent who can fight gear 2 luffy who's casually eating island cracking punches also, with Buggy's abilities, he'd never even get chopped by Hedon and could chop his head off like Asuma. Winner, Buggy, and even with equal stats, I think Buggy just outranges Hedon and would probably be able to cut his head off. Next up, we have Mama vs. Mama, Conan vs. Boa Hancock. Conan unfortunately doesn't have any good feats outside of almost killing Obito with prep time, and we know she's probably faster than Hidon, but Boa would upscale from the likes of Buggy. Since she scales above Smoker, who bodies this Luffy, Buggy is shown to be comparable to. And Buggy's only comparable to this version of Luffy in base in terms of speed, whereas Boa is beating up Smoker, who is beating up Gear 2 Luffy, which Gear 2 is a 10 times amp. And we do see her attacks having a type of durability negation so with this boa should be able to easily tag and just take down conan and let's say she were to pull the attack that she did on obito off at that point sure conan wins and in terms of equal stats maybe she can win but it is a little weird to say i think in equal stats maybe it might be up in the air with maybe conan having better range but i'm not sure how it would be able to interact with the likes of her observation hockey and if she were to tag conan once is it wraps i really don't know at that point but what I do know is, in terms of a normal fight, Bo would slap. Datara fighting another sand guy, how will it go this time? Well we know Crocodile could be intercepted by Luffy in Gear 2 along with him being portrayed to be relative to Gear 3 Luffy in AP, and this same Luffy who hurts Moria can split islands, and as for Datara, his best attack that being C0 is calculated to be at small country level, which I do not think Crocodile can really do anything to stop, but what if he just escapes the area like Sasuke or simply drains Datara's hydration as he's trying to get it off? I also think in character, Crocodile would just be the type to get Datara on edge, so I honestly think the whole situation is just preying on Datara's downfall. Without C0, there's really no way to prove he could really harm Croc. To determine who's faster is kind of interesting because Croc and Datara are both characters who are kind of trash but kind of strong. Like reanimated Datara is actually apparently strong, whereas alive Datara just kind of sucks. And Crocodile, I would say, is like light speed kinda. And then you have Marine Ford where he's apparently clashing with Do Flamingo, being able to take attacks from Jozu, stopping Mihawk. However, I think what's more consistent is that he's around that gear 2 luffy range until proven otherwise and if we were to use reanimated data and say that he like scales to kcm naruto or whatever then it's possible that he would be able to catch the w but i'm talking about you know a live data you know in the akatsuki and that data barely has any light speed scaling whatsoever so i would give the w to crocodile 
profile. However, in equal stats, Datara might just get the W because he has so much range and he could even turn Croc's attacks into explosives. So in a normal fight, it'd be Crocodile, but in equal stats, I'd give it to Datara. Sorcery versus Doflamingo, the battle of the string users. I find this matchup to be a little interesting since both characters have unique movesets. Doflamingo has the ability to make string clones, manipulate people with string, or even turn the whole area around him into it. Meanwhile, Sorcery has Iron Sand, which if it could connect, could actually do something to Doflamingo along with Poison. However, I do not think Sorcery's attacks would ever land on Doflamingo due to the immense speed gap. By this point, we're entering the post time skip era of the characters, meaning these guys are well into light speed, as pre-time skip characters are already reaching that tier. And then in post time skip, we get base Luffy doing even better than what he did in gear 2 against the pacifistas, and then you have gear 2 stacking on that, and then you have Luffy getting stronger as the arcs progress. I think you guys can see where this is going. Doflamingo also withstood gear 4 Luffy's punch, which was calc at country level, and Sasori, I don't really think has anything, like, we know that his puppets can apparently take over a country, which is like, oh my god, cool. But yeah, yeah, the speed gap is just too big and Doflamingo would pimp Smack Saucery. To put it this way, Saucery's best light speed scaling is from the games where he apparently scales to Orochimaru. Orochimaru being a character relative to Haruzen, and you already know he should scale above the likes of Haku, you know Haku has mirrors, you guys already understand. Raikage, yeah you get it. This same Zoro is relative to Gear 2 Luffy in pre-time skip, and then when we enter post time skip, base Luffy does better than those two. And it was still a struggle to take Doflamingo down, and we know that Gear 4 is a several times amp on top of what he already has, which is bare minimum three times. Meaning base Luffy, who would be above the Luffy who is 18 times the speed of light, can use gear two, which would mean he can go 180 times the speed of light, can stack that by three times, and can now move at 540 times the speed of light. And Doflamingo does scale to Luffy in speed. Doflamingo slaps him. However, in equal stats, I think it is definitely possible for Sorcery to win because he has poison, iron sand. It would be weird because both of these characters have crazy ranged attacks. However, I think Sorcery has more going for him than Doflamingo. And also, we have the fact that he legit isn't going to be destroyed unless his core is destroyed. So in equal stats, Sorcery wins, but in a normal fight, it would go to Doflamingo. Next fight, Kuma versus Kakuzu. Both are not only tanks, but surprisingly have versatility to them. Kakuzu has all five elements and a lot of range, but bro just got outsped by base Naruto. But what's funny is Kuma got folded arguably even worse than Kakuzu did, but the difference here is that we know that Kuma upskills from the pacifistas, who despite being able to dodge the lasers, overall were just not being able to compete with them. And on top of all of this, Kuma with one swipe could just send Kakuzu off the battlefield, and that's it. He actually scales to the Two Tails, who with the Two Tails and the Wark, even though they're reanimated and have the Sharingan and Renegon and are clearly stronger than their base selves, scale to KCM Naruto, bro! Kakuzu survived the Rasen Shuriken for like 10 seconds before dying, and this was calculated to be like at small town level. Kuma, even with the super big low ball, should be way above city, plus has BFR. Kakuzu and Kuma as well, I think, should be somewhat relative in speed. Then again, I'm not so very sure because the Kakashi that was just scrapping with this version of Kakuzu is nothing compared to his Warwick self, and then Haku would go on to react to that Kakashi. It's just really weird, and I also don't think Kakuzu, who again, lost to a base Naruto and lost to a base Rasen Shuriken, would upscale from the likes of the Raikage. Kuma, in my opinion, takes both rounds. Next up, we have Jinbei versus Kisame, the two fishmen of their respective group, who would come out on top if they were to fight. Well, Kisame's biggest advantage would probably come from his tailless biju state, which allows him to summon a body of water to gain the advantage over someone. However, Kisame does not know that Jinbei can not only fight in water and fight better in water, but he can legit manipulate water itself, meaning he might just throw Kisame's ball of water legit at him and just take him down with his own supply, which he would be capable of doing as we know that he's able to press the likes of Big Mom and he would upscale from the characters in Wano like being able to press who's who meaning he'd upscale from Katakuri, who was able to slap Gear 4 Luffy, who we already established has MFTL scaling, and then Luffy would go on to upscale from this version of Gear 4 in base. And then we know that Luffy would go on to use Gear 4 against Kaido, get one shot, and then we know that Luffy's new base form is actually just stronger than that version of Gear 4, and we know that this base Luffy was scrapping with the weakest of Kaido's commanders, which means Jinbei would upscale from this base Luffy. Kisame sadly gets blitzed, and even in equal stats, Jinbei legit hard counters him. 
The next fight, honestly, is just Goat versus Goat. Law versus Itachi. Unfortunately, though, Itachi is just way too slow for any of his abilities to work, and Law could just neg every organ in his body, turn him into Swiss cheese, or completely incapacitate him. Like, I already mentioned the crazy scaling for Jinbei. This man, Law, actually scales to Kaido and Big Mom. However, for equal stats, I think Law, unfortunately, might lose, because if Itachi just gets his Genjutsu off its wraps, there's really nothing Law can do to counter it. Plus, we also have the Susano just being an instant in one shot. However, if Law can hit Itachi before Itachi can hit him, then Law could maybe win. However, it's safer to say I think that Itachi would get his Genjutsu off, more than likely Law would get an attack off. And so, for that reason, I will say Law in a normal fight would beat Itachi up, but in equal stats, Itachi would win. And I specifically have saved these last two matchups, as these four characters represent the two strongest Akatsuki members and the two strongest Warlords. The first fight will be Mihawk versus Obito. Now, with Obito's powers, it'd be really annoying knowing for anyone to really fight him with relative stats plus his Sharingan, but normally I think Mihawk is just way faster than Obito being above the likes of Shanks, and unironically Mihawk would look like he's using Obito's ability against him due to how big the speed gap is. Obito would not be able to cast Kamui before Mihawk's blade meets his skull. And equal stats, sure, you can give it to Obito. And for the last matchup, we have Blackbeard versus Pain. Now in equal stats, it's low-key kind of interesting since Blackbeard wouldn't be able to touch them, but none of the Pains wouldn't really be able to affect him. Now, obviously Chakra and Haki are different, but when it comes to these versus battles, we usually have the energies equalized to make things simple. Therefore, Blackbeard with his Darkness Fruit would be able to negate some of the Pain's abilities. I could see the Human Path catching Blackbeard off guard and stripping Bro soul away, but if it's Blackbeard with both fruits, I think the sheer range of his attacks along with him being able to negate everyone's abilities, I don't really think it's a discussion. The Akatsuki, although having a hierarchy, I felt like were very consistent with their powers, and by the end game, they were kind of irrelevant. However, because the Warlords varied in strength with characters that are legit some of the strongest in the verse at this point, along with some of the weakest characters and the most inconsistent ones, in terms of the scope of the scaling, it's just they have way higher highs. And I'm basically trying to say in a nice way, the Akatsuki get shitted on!